Less than a month since it first launched on beta, the fifth level of the Guild Expeditions has arrived on the live servers. In fact, it's not even finished being balanced and admits that at the bottom of the announcement. Here's the main points that you need to know going in. First, everything is now a fragment. And no, I am not joking. Every single building or upgrade that you could previously get in full has become fragmented, including the original four levels of the expeditions. Second, level 5 is either going to cost tons of goods or require high defense boosts. The defense boost requirement has been reduced from the original amounts, but is still very high at a maximum of 1967% in Space Age Jupiter Moon. Third, diamonds are still nerfed, giving on average 81 per week or 4200 per year, down from 8200. So let's dive into the details, starting with the changes to levels 1 to 4. You won't notice a change in difficulty here, but you'll definitely notice the change in rewards. The encounter's rewards have been completely reorganized, and while they have been made a lot less random, they have been made very fragmenty. Instead of receiving, say, a Face of the Ancient, you'll now get fragments of the level 1 selection kit that you can then get the Face of the Ancient from. In total, there are four new level selection kits, and these are the level 1, with the bases and upgrades for the Face of the Ancient and Gate of the Sun God, the level 2, with the base and upgrade for the Ritual Flame, the level 3, with the base and upgrades for the Tribal Square and Sacred Skywatch, and the level 4, with the base and upgrade for the Terrace Farm. You might notice that the Fountain of Youth wasn't mentioned, but we'll get to that later. After playing through all four original levels of the expeditions, you'll receive a full kit of each of the level 1 to 3 kits, and you'll also average one level 4 kit per week. This is actually kind of nice, as you can now choose whether you want the level 1 or upgrade from these kits. However, what about the Fountain of Youth? Well, you'll need 800 fragments to assemble it, or its trinket, and you only get, on average, 50 fragments of both of these per week. This means that it will take about 16 weeks to complete one Fountain of Youth or its Shrink Kit, equaling only about three of each of the base and Shrink Kit per year. Ouch. That will definitely be rough for Diamond Farms looking to get more Fountains. On the topic of Diamond Farms, what about the Diamond Rewards? Well, they're still nerfed. You only get, on average, 81 Diamonds per week or 4,200 per year, and this is a big difference, about half, from the 8200 diamonds that you could get in the previous version of the expeditions. Additionally, diamonds are only available from every fourth chest in level 4 of the expeditions, so none from levels 1 to 3. In some good news though, you'll now get more forge points, goods, units, and attempts, as well as more blueprints for the Temple of Relics. And you might want the Temple of Relics if you have a diamond farm, as you now only need a level 7 temple to get more Fountains of Youth per week than you would from Fragments if you play all 5 levels. The other buildings are also shown here for your viewing pleasure. If you decide to not play the 5th level though, you'll still get more Fountains of Youth with only a level 8 temple. But enough stalling. Let's talk about level 5 of the Guild Expeditions. You're first greeted with a nice, calm, lush jungle. Don't let this fool you. This is going to be very hard for you to complete today, but over time it should get easier as we get new, more powerful event buildings and potentially, hopefully, balancing changes. As with the previous four levels, you can choose to fight or negotiate. However, if you fight, your attack boosts will not be used, rather your defensive boosts. On top of that, the boosts required are intended to be quite high. The maximum enemy boosts in the Iron Age will be about 730%, all the way up to 1967% in Space Age Jupiter Moon. That sounds hard, so what about the negotiations? Well, those are extremely expensive in their own right, as at the final encounter it will take 78 goods per option of a negotiation. That means that it can take thousands of goods, maybe near 10,000, depending on if you fail a negotiation. The only partial good news is that you can build what are known as fortifications to make your life easier. In total, there are seven different types. The Eagle Warrior Temple increases the attack boosts for your defensive army. The Jaguar Warrior Temple increases the defense of your defending army. 
The Great Warrior Temple increases both the attack and defense of your defending army. The Temple of Infiltration will infiltrate the enemy army, so taking away one hit point on each enemy unit. The Zakazontli statue reduces the number of goods needed for each negotiation option. And the Tlaco Tlacoats only, I'm sorry I can't pronounce these, reduces the number of negotiation options by one. However, there's a bit of a problem with the fortifications. They cost a lot of goods, and especially for the negotiation ones, they'll actually cost more goods than what they would save you, making them just a really bad investment. I'll leave the decision of whether these are worth building up to you though, and just remember that if you need them, you can always use the boost bottles from your inventory, and the defensive ones will actually stack, and there's the tavern boost to give yourself an extra attempt in your negotiations. After all of this, the prizes for level 5 are actually pretty good. There's a total of 7 brand new buildings up for grabs. The Greater Ritual Flame will give a 7% attack and defense boost to your defending armies, and the Divine Skywatch will give 5 forge points and a 4% attack and defense boost for your attacking armies. However, it's important to know that these versions can only be obtained from level 5. You cannot upgrade normal Ritual Flames or Sacred Skywatches to these better versions. There's also a brand new chain building, the Feathered Serpent Statue. This 3x2 building will give you a whopping 10 forge points and 15% attack and defense boost for attacking armies at its third and final level. The Feathered Serpent has three 2x2 chain pieces that can be attached, being the Serpent Fins, that provides a 5% attack and defense boost for attacking armies, the Serpent Feathers that provides 20 goods, and the Serpent Spikes that provides a 15% attack and defense boost for defending armies. The last new building is the Forgotten Temple, a 3x4 building that provides a 40% attack and defense boost for attacking armies, a 50% attack and defense boost for defending armies, and a 20% forge point boost, meaning that for every 5 forge points a building produces, you'll get 6. However, the Forgotten Temple is a limited time building, and only lasts for 28 days, so 4 weeks. The good news is that you can get enough fragments to assemble a new one by completing all of level 5 every week. Did you hear the catch? Fragments. All the new buildings that I just mentioned can only be won via fragments. In total, it will take 4 weeks to get each of the above buildings, or the selection kits for the Feathered Serpents level 1 and upgrades, or its 3 chain buildings. That means that you will not get any tangible rewards for completing level 5 until your 4th time playing it. That's not all though. Scattered throughout the 5th level are these awesome new portraits. Don't get me wrong, these look pretty cool, but they have a 10% chance of being won during 9 of the 16 encounters in the 5th level. This means that you will rarely get one of these instead of the fragments for some of the expedition buildings. However, once you win the portraits, you will then have a 100% chance of winning the fragments. This will affect winning fragments of the Feathered Serpent and its chain buildings, the Greater Ritual Flame, and the Divine Sky Watch. And all of this means that it might take you about 5 weeks to obtain one of these buildings from fragments until you win all of the portraits. Oh, and as you might expect, the 5th level will cost more guild goods to open, between 32 of each Iron Age good and up to 192 of each Space Age Jupiter Moon good. To put that in perspective, a level 80 arc provides only 162 of each of your Age's goods for your guild per day. It's expensive to unlock, so you might want to check with your guild's leaders to make sure that you have enough goods in your treasury to reliably open it every week. Overall though, I recommend trying out the 5th level for a few weeks before drawing the conclusion that's too hard. Yes, it's expensive, but the rewards are super powerful, and what are you doing with all those goods that you've got stored up anyways? Let me know your thoughts though, are you excited? Have you made it to the 5th level yet by the time I post this video? And does the whole thing need to be changed? Let me know in a comment. And if you enjoyed this guide, why not check out my guide on some of the best and worst ways to level your grade buildings. It's linked on screen now. Good luck with the 5th level of the expeditions, and as always, I'll see you next time.